So the exterior wall framing here at the Lakeside Oasis is done, including the sheeting. And if you hadn't seen this before, I wanted to show you this. This is a Zip R system. Uh, so it's it's the Zip system that I like to use because then I don't have to use house wrap. Uh, it's 7 16 of sheeting, OSB. And then on this one, it's an R6 foam board that's already pre-attached to this. Uh, we use, we've used this on other projects too, but in case you hadn't seen it, I wanted to show you because I think it's a really cool system on my house. I did kind of the reverse of this where I put the sheeting directly to the studs and then I put foam board over top of it. Mine was a half inch just for this, for the thermal break. Um, so it prevents thermal bridging. So if you didn't know what thermal bridging was, here's a good spot to show you. Um, so thermal bridging is the cold or warmth. We'll try to get into your wall system from the outside. Let's say it's, I don't know, 30 degrees outside, it's 70 degrees inside. So there's this problem where the cold wants to move in. And so this, this insulation will stop or hinder that from happening. Thermal bridging is when you have a solid surface like the OSB and it's directly onto the stud. And then on the inside, you have drywall directly attached to the stud. And it was very interesting. I didn't know this early in my career. And we built a house that we spray foamed uh, in between the studs. We did the sheeting directly to the studs and drywall or plasterboard on the inside. It was a very, very efficient house, um, especially compared to a lot of houses in this area, in this climate. And I came back one day to uh, do a little bit of touch up work or whatever it was. And it was late in the fall. And what I had noticed, it was a little bit frosty overnight. And so the roof had a little bit of frost on it. And the wall walls on the outside, we put smart siding on it. And what I had noticed was I could see there was like frost on the outside of the siding in this like inch and a half, basically. You could see where each of the studs were. And I thought, well, that's kind of odd. I don't remember, you know, having this problem before. And so the thing was, we had made the uh, the stud bays, the, the wall was completely foamed. So that was our strong point. And the weak point in the envelope was actually the studs. Well, for the cold to make it all the way through from the outside, all the way to the inside of a two by six, it takes a, a bunch, you know, but hey, that's what happened. So it's very interesting to me, and it started this thought of mine of how we could do it even better, because that was about as good as I had been taught to do. But now with some of these new products like the Zip R, I'm able to create a thermal break so that I don't have that issue anymore. And this stops the cold from going from outside to inside, because outside you have so many times that the uh, temperature fluctuates greatly. So especially like here in Wisconsin, sometimes you'll have a morning that's like 35, 40 degrees in the morning and it's 80 degrees in the afternoon. So, and that's just in one, like less than 24 hour period. And so you can have these wild fluctuations and it's not for every, um, every climate, but here that's what we have. And so this, this helps to cut down on the amount of transfer uh, cut down, if not eliminate, I'm not going to say eliminate 100% because um, it's it's one inch. But what, we'll, what we will end up doing here is we'll be able to put uh, two or three inches of spray foam in between the studs here. And then you, oh, but we already have one inch. And so in theory, we should be able to go with less spray foam, uh, two and a half inches. Let's say two and a half inches because that would be roughly... Uh, let's see, spray foam is roughly seven R7 per inch. So you're at 18 R18 or something plus the six is going to give you roughly R24. And our, in our climate, our code says that the walls need to be R19 minimum or R21. I can't remember which. It's either 19 or 21, which to me is a little bit low, but 
we've been exceeding that for many years and this just greatly helps us get beyond and we're not affiliated with this at all i just have noticed that i enjoy working with this and it seems to be a great system so the garages that we were doing there's one across the road behind me um but those were used with the same zip system sheeting but those are sips panels s-i-p-s they're zip sips from eco panels of tennessee uh, those that's another great way of cutting down on thermal bridging